Margaret Burbage is a giant in the field of astronomy and physics. One of the giants of the kind of transformation of astronomy in the 20th century into a major branch of physics. Margaret Burbage was an observational astronomer. She uh, was one of the pioneers, actually, in stellar spectroscopy and understanding elemental abundances in stars. And hand in glove with that were the observations in high energy astronomy, X-ray astronomy, and also the observations of QSOs, of quasi-stellar objects, of quasars. Every now and then, I'm truly fortunate, I come across some astronomical image that she made. She was perhaps, you know, the foremost uh, astronomer of the, of the 20th century, and her influence is still being felt today. Where do the elements come from? And how do you prove where they come from? Well, that took some time to sort out to get it right, to know that, well, they're made in stars. And the Burbage, Burbage, Fowler, and Hoyle paper it was the first and still is the most important that's ever been written on that subject, giving you the cookbook for how do you make the elements and why. The team of Fowler and Fred Hoyle, another British astrophysicist, and Jeff Burbage and Margaret Burbage uh, really set the stage for understanding where the elements come from and, and, and again, brokering this very deep relationship between observational astronomy and nuclear physics. They figured out how you add things like neutrons especially, that they add on a neutron and it can make it into an isotope or it can make it into an extra neutron which decays by beta decay and becomes a new element. We now understand that most of the elements, uh, essentially heavier than, than uh, lithium, were manufactured in the interiors of stars or in, in cosmic ray interactions associated with supernovae. So that's a pretty remarkable thing. And that, that, that work itself continues to this day. Well, I think Margaret's main contribution other than being one of the first great women astronomers around, observational astronomers, was going after distant galaxies and other galaxies, trying to understand what was going on there, got into redshifts of galaxies and understanding the expansion of the universe. Margaret Burbage and Jeff Burbage, they were both known, especially Margaret, for work on the spectroscopy and, and morphology of quasi-stellar objects. And that helped to establish that these things were indeed uh, probably uh, supermassive black holes and material was falling into them. And again, that's with the gravitational energy being released as this material was heated as it approached the, uh, the black hole. And, and that's kind of our, our, our working model now for what these things are. One big project that Margaret had a, a big hand in is the faint object spectrograph on the Hubble Space Telescope. So CAS always, and to this day, retains this, um, this kind of soup to nuts uh, approach to the subject. In other words, there are theorists here and there are people who work on hardware and everything in between. Well, I came here a long time ago, 40 years ago or more, and Margaret was here as one of the great astronomers. And so it was fun every once in a while to go down and talk to her about what was going on. Or I had a question, how in the heck do these galaxies work? Because I came here from the field of high energy physics, not astronomy, so I had a lot to learn. and. I could go down and talk to her every once in a while about galaxies and stuff like that. She was also a great source, her library, in that she had subscriptions to all the scientific journals that we were interested in and we didn't have subscriptions to. So you go down and, oh, Margaret, can I borrow this? And she was very particular, okay, but put a note down there because I want that back. I want to know who had it. So, okay, that's fair. I was first hired to assist um, Jeff Burbage, and Margaret Burbage was his wife. Jeff was a character, but Margaret, I think, was his match. The Burbages used to go, I guess, to France every summer for about a month, and so, is there anything I can really do to help you guys while you're gone? And so, 
Margaret kind of got a funny little smile on her face and she says, oh yeah, she says, you can clean off Jeff's desk while we're gone, but don't tell him I told you to do that. Jeff's desk was like piled high. When Jeff and Margaret got back from Paris, his desk was cleaned off and he just kind of went through the roof. And so Jeff was, what, who did this, why, you know? And so, well, Margaret told me to do that. <laughs> she was just the sweetest, most wonderful person. Willie Fowler would take uh, sabbaticals apparently every, or would spend the summers in Cambridge. I think working with Fred Hoyle, um, but he met the Burbages there. He wanted to bring uh, Margaret to Caltech as a postdoc. It turned out that the astronomy department at Caltech didn't really want to hire a woman because they claimed they didn't have the right facilities on the mountain for that. So he cooked up uh, an arrangement with the, some of the astronomers there. And so what he did is he had a, uh, he had a postdoc available in, in the Kellogg Radiation Laboratory at Caltech, which was a nuclear physics lab. So he hired Margaret in that position. And they hired Jeff as the astronomer. Well, I got to know her because, of course, since I worked in nucleosynthesis and, the, and Margaret was here, that was one of the first people I wanted to get to know. I was hired in the chemistry department, but to do what was called cosmochemistry, still is called cosmochemistry, which is basically the origin of planets and elements. And the elements part was pure Margaret. And I'd never met her. And so when the time came that I worked up my nerve to come over and meet her, it was good because the Center for Astrophysics and Space Science was already here. And I think at the time she was chair of it. Little by little, she told me how their files are handled and how what the process is at the University of California. And I said, well, well, that was good to know. And somehow by the time I walked out the door, I was in charge of handling everyone's files and reviews, even though I was young that she had talked me into doing it. And I didn't somehow notice she was so gentle and kind and quiet that I didn't realize I was stepping into a job. <laughs> I know my wife taught uh, third grade and she had a little contest there and she, my wife made up the prize would be able to go to UCSD and speak to Margaret. She did, my wife did this without telling me about it, but that's a whole nother story. Anyway, so two young women won this, two third grade girls, and they came down and Margaret was very wonderful. She spoke to them and talked to them and they were very excited to talk to her. And I thought it was a great idea for the young girls to get an opportunity to meet a female scientist who was very famous and maybe inspire them a little bit. Margaret, happy birthday and thank you for everything. Happy birthday, Margaret. Margaret, happy birthday. Happy 100th birthday. I'm, I'm very proud to have known you and congratulations, not only on the birthday, but most of all for your career. Coming here from Chicago where you already were a legacy there, that was one of the highlights of coming here, was having the chance to meet Margaret Burbage. And uh, here's to you, Margaret. Happy birthday.